What's going on, everybody? It is a uh, beautiful but windy Saturday morning. It's about noon. I'm here in Radford, Virginia. So today is April 13th. It is also my birthday. And for my birthday, I decided to just drive down the road here and meet up with Jimmy and Julie. And if you notice in the background, that is Ingalls Castle. We are here for round two. We were here last year. We got some good footage, but now we're hoping to uh, see what's changed, get some more info, some more history, and maybe some more really good footage for you, and then put it out, and hopefully you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here, and let's cut that intro, and then get inside and meet up with them. Hey folks, Jimmy here with Spooky Appalachia. We had some issues with the audio here at Ingalls Castle, but we are here today. We're joined by Joe and Julie. They run the tours here at Ingalls Castle, and uh, they're very knowledgeable about the history of Ingalls Castle. And then, of course, my co-host Donald is here as well. Joe had a really neat idea for a theme for this video. It is April 13th. We're at 13 Ingalls Street. And there's 13 areas of interest in this house that we're going to take a look at. Alright, so here is our first area of interest. And that's the outside of Ingalls Castle and all of its beauty. All right, so this is space two. This is Captain Billy's library or office. This is where he did and conducted most of his business. Did we talk about, I'm gonna stop every now and then so you can get something to, to edit out of, maybe. Okay. <laughs> did we, uh, well, disclaimer, we just wanna give a disclaimer. While we know a whole lot more about the Ingalls Castle and uh, its builder and architect and the first generation that lived here, Captain Billy Ingalls, we do have some gaps because we don't have all of this information memorized. And we are uh, very sensitive to the Ingalls family history and want to be respectful of that. So we may make some missteps. And if we do, I'll be really quick to jump into the comments section <laughs> and correct those. So just stay tuned because, again, we're kind of in a rough draft of um, bringing the castle back to a place uh, of where it once was, like a hub of social life in the New River Valley and, and business, if you will. So this is Captain Billy's castle. Captain Billy uh, was the great grandson of Mary Draper Ingalls, who is definitely well known. Why don't you pick up her story here? Because okay. <laughs> Mary Draper Ingalls. And Mary her Draper Ingalls, um, her and her husband, who, who's also named William, they were settlers in what is now present day Blacksburg on the Virginia Tech campus but at the time it was known as Draper's Meadow. And this was during the French and Indian War. And 
they were you know living their lives there and some Shawnee Indians came through they were working with the French and attacked the settlement they killed most everybody there that was around but they did abduct Mary and her two children and Mary was expecting her third child at the time and then they also took her sister-in-law so she watched the rest of her family her mother and all them being massacred <clears throat> excuse me and so the natives, they, they took, held them captive and, and took them out, which is now present-day Ohio. But this woman was smart. She knew that she already was formulating a plan that as soon as she had a chance, she was going to try to get away. And so the, every bit of the way as they're trying to get there, she would watch backwards so that when she's coming back, she could recognize the scenery returning. And I think it was like three or four days into the journey to Ohio, she gave birth to her third child. Well, they all get to where they're going. It's a native settlement up there. Um, eventually, her children, her two older children, getting sold to other, you know, as slaves into two other um, tribes. So that left her with her infant. And um, so at that point, her, her children was the only thing that was keeping her there. And I think they knew that. So she had a lot of freedom there. But, um, but they knew as long as she had her children. So that was their mistake but <laughs> to sell her children. And she decided it would be safer to leave her baby there. And she's probably true, but she, the baby would not, would not have made it. But anyway, her and the old Dutch woman, they went out to um, forage in the forest one day, and they had already planned, and they, they made their escape. They had, a, they had an ax, but, you know, they didn't really have much. And, you know, the natives didn't even look for them because they figured they were women, they were going to die anyway, and so they left them. And they started their journey in October, and it took them until what December, November, December. I think they got back in November. November, but yeah. So it was a it was a good trek, but she made it all the way back here to the New River she Valley. She made all the She had to escape the old Dutch woman. <laughs> the old Dutch woman was kind of they got hungry after a while, and there wasn't much to eat, and they were you know really were starving to death. And the old Dutch woman apparently tried to kill Mary and make her dinner one was day. She believe, yeah, I think she believed she was going to be eaten by her. So. And so Mary managed to, to escape and get to the opposite side of the river from mm -hmm. her, but they all, they both managed to, you know, to get to safety and everything. But, but that's the story of Mary and her story is known as the, the long walk home. And what we really want to focus on here is start to unpack Captain Billy's story because yes. this is a special house, but he has a significant history for the city of Radford as well. So Captain Billy, all of the Ingalls' sons served in the Civil War that could and even those that couldn't because Captain Billy was actually too young uh, at the time to serve, but he does manage getting enlisted into the Confederate Army. He does enlist late in the war and he serves in the cavalry. Eventually he will be, uh, his horse will be shot out from underneath him and he will be captured in prison. I believe he is, in, I believe he's in prison for six months and from some of the accounts I've read, I think there were some, I read one account that said he had a head injury and maybe one of his legs was wounded, um, but he was very proud of his Confederate heritage. After the war, he will actually uh, go to Washington College and he will be educated as an engineer. That will be one of uh, his career paths, if you will, after the college or after college. He will actually go on to serve uh, the Washington and Lee University for the rest of his life. He will serve on the board of trustees. I actually found a letter where he will uh, resign about a few months. It was either January or February. He will write a letter to Washington and Lee University resigning from his post and letting them know that uh, his health is so bad at that point that he's not even able to write his letters for himself anymore. I mean, it's very cordial and respectful of his history and letting them know that he needs to step down and give up his post because he knows his time um, is coming. But this is his office. He was a railroad engineer. He helped design and build the railroad, which is that away um, behind uh, the house. He helped build a school or uh, was on a trustee of school for minors uh, here in Radford in the New River Valley. He was also the president of a bank in the city of Radford, as well as a wool business, a wool industry here in Radford that also had a store that sold some of the things. So he was a very well-rounded uh, business entrepreneur, if you will. And this was the office that he worked from, his library. This, and so this is space number two that we wanted to, to, to focus on. And this is actually the uh, space 
that has the woman in the mirror. The famous mirror. Yes. Yes. The mirror. <laughs> now, I had heard about this one as a kid, which, you know, I said earlier that got me interested in this place. If you shine the light correctly on here. What you will see is the profile of Nanny Bass, and she's holding her cat up so you can see the cat as well. What happened here, that mirror, it's an old mirror, and it was made with the same technology as old photographs were. And so with the bright light, you know, it can burn an image in. And what happened with this mirror, Nanny Bass was here in the library, and she was comforting her cat during a storm. And we had a big lightning strike outside, and it lit up the room in here bright enough to burn Nanny's image along with her cat into the mirror. And that's her right there. And this is the lady, that's her, and that's her photograph there. It's actually her. Um, I guess technically that would be a photograph as well. Yeah, it was, it was, it was back with the silver nitrate, yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't think of it. I, I didn't want to say the wrong nitrate, thing. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll say something too. Like I was reading about the house today. The, the house, the lighting in here was gas, uh, gas lighting. They don't know why um, he did not wire the house the first go around but uh, he doesn't wire the house with electricity for a few years later. But back in October, when I was telling the story, it was kind of, um, my understanding was that the electricity wasn't reliable at the time. That's what and I was so they used the gas, or they used the gas backup so that they wouldn't use, lose their lighting. So that brings us to this remarkable chandelier here. Yeah, so I've this, never seen a chandelier like this. Usually they're gas or they're electric. This, this is one both. is actually set for both. So you have your electric lights here, and then you have You'd these, be able to twist these to yeah, get the gas, gas going. So I didn't even notice that until back in the fall. I, had, I was like, maybe bulbs yeah. or something? And then I went, I was like, oh, I see. It's, it's both. And, so for my, and also from my understanding, he had an agreement with the electric company that he would allow them to put the power station here on his property if they gave him free electricity. <laughs> so, that'd be what nice now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, how long that lasted, I don't know. Probably not now, because uh, they were paying for it. I mean, they should. But yeah. Anyway. I don't know. Is there anything else we could say about the library or space two here that I may have missed? Well, I do know this. So this was leaving space two to space three. This was actually the location that people from my understanding, would come in to do business with Captain Billy, but now it's actually built in as a green room, if you will, or a conservatory. So let's go take a look at that. So this is space three. Space three. Um, the sunroom here was not original to the house. This was a porch at one time, and it was a, a business entrance for um, Captain, <laughs> when Captain <laughs> Billy would have like, you know, business people to come in, they would enter through this door and then go into the library that way. And I would have to imagine it was probably a servant's entrance as well, since it does connect with that servant hallway. What do Maybe, you think? I would I'm think, speculating uh, on that yeah. one, but I mean, it kind of makes sense yeah. that they, you know, because they wouldn't come Now that's the cook's room. house there, and the yes. cook's house was actually part of the original house. So um, where I'm at now, so if you move closer from the far, from the Ingalls Castle, La Riviere, if you move closer to the Ingalls farm, the original farm, that's where Captain Billy's dad's house was. It burnt down. We didn't talk about the fire, I don't think. So that home burnt down sometime in 1890, yeah. but there was a fire for the first castle. So this actually is not the first castle. The first castle was built prior to, well, their marriage? Uh, I think so, or maybe it was being... Uh in process. In process while we they were know, on their honeymoon. We do know they were on their honeymoon and the first house burnt down. And so um, Captain Billy did not waste any time. He rebuilt um, to the exact same specification. He actually designed the house. There are some design features that we're not really sure what he was thinking. <laughs> According to the historical record, what inspired him? They think it was Probably his Scotch-Irish heritage that inspired him to include certain things. Um, but anyway, this was not part of it. This comes according to, if I remember the application of the registry, this came probably in the 20s or 30s that they 
closed this in. So yeah, I don't think Captain Billy would have seen Yeah, this. that was my understanding that Captain Billy's nephew, who inherited the property after many passed, right. um, that he, he has had this yeah, built on. Yeah. But I like it, although I don't I, think enough is done with it. I think yeah, I think they had a nice else. concept, yeah. and they dropped the ball. Yeah. Nothing personal. <laughs> and I don't think this was Captain Billy's safe, and we don't know what's in it, but we if there's anybody that could crack a safe. That's, hey, first time I remember, you know, Chubby, the first time we were here, what did he say? If, if we could open it up, what, if there was anything in there, we could keep it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So maybe it's, maybe it's like the first challenge of this group for the cast was like, who can crack <laughs> this safe? safe all right, I think we're ready for space four. Let's move on. Let's go to space right. four. I think there's an informal dining room, but this is so. This is the formal dining room. One of the things I love in here is the uh, print of wallpaper border at the top. I believe this has. Uh, if you read, if you Google it, you can find it. But this is something related, I believe, to the Crimean War. But I really like this design here. Um, here in the in the dining room. I like it in here. And I'd like to kind of point out too, if, one thing you'll notice in the house that all the windows have these like custom blinds, if you will. I made a scope when I was in here cleaning. I was like, what's this? And I opened it up, but when you're not using, they all fall down into the, see, I'm not brave enough to do that, <laughs> but isn't that something? So, I mean, it's a really thought, a lot of thought and detail into yeah, the, the sound of this cool. house. Yeah. yeah, I discovered that. I was like, what are these hinges for? And I was kind of afraid to open it. I was like, please don't nothing break. But I was like, how very crazy. And the stained glass is just, if you get in here at the right time and the right lighting, it, it's like, a, it's purple. It's a really purple. It's really pretty. And another feature of this dining room is the butler's pantry. <laughs> The hey folks! <laughs> There's the butler now. Yeah, I'm the spooky Appalachian butler. Yeah. <laughs> but these, this are, they would have had the food. You can see there was this, what's left of the sink back There's there, and the right food here. would have been passed out through here. And this is a silver set that's original to the castle, right? And if you'll notice this little interesting thing right here, oh. this is a vacuum cleaner, and it took two oh, people. Oh, good lord! Yeah. Two people to so work. So someone it. actually, it's not electric. Someone had to pump it. Yeah. Right here. And so you had to have you had to have a partner to vacuum the floor with. <laughs> Which ironically enough, it says it's the automatic vacuum cleaner <laughs> company. <laughs> but I have never seen anything quite like that. Yeah. But. All right, Jimmy, start cleaning. It's gonna take two of us. <laughs> Keep going. Don't I'll toss point to see something. And another interesting feature about the dining room. He, um, throughout the house, they had like buttons, which when we get come across one, I'll point it out to you. But they had like call buttons for servants. And there was one underneath the table, the dining room table. So if he needed to call for a servant while they were in here eating, he could hit the button. And that was, from my understanding, that was not wired by electricity, but it was actually operated off of Edison batteries. Yeah, that was. Hmm. Well, with the unreliable electricity, you might be waiting forever for your well, servant to true. show up. <laughs> This. Yeah, this chandelier is just amazing. And of course, every room has a, a lovely fireplace. I think they're all different. But, yeah. Oh, it's the glare. It's hard to see. Yeah. yeah. There are several behind that one, and they all have like cutouts like that. It's all history. Y'all want to look through that? Now I think we're ready for space five. Which was... Well, this, now we can eight. go to the parlor. <laughs> this is one of those, so we're in space four now. This is the parlor. This is one of those spots that you were talking about. Yes, one there. of those buttons um, that you uh, could call the servants and let them know where they're at. Yeah. Well, you pressed it and I showed up. There's, That's right. Right. There's the butler. <laughs> and um, I'd like to point out a couple of things in this room that I found kind of neat. This wallpaper, if you'll feel it, it's burlap. Yeah, this is Which burlap. Is, yeah. <laughs> this is really wild to have like it's burlap. Um, I was reading in one of Minnie's journals from this day, maybe 1906. I don't know. She uh, talked about having company and playing bridge. So I imagine maybe they were playing bridge in the parlor. They probably were because just I can't say for sure for this house, but 
for the times, generally it would have been, the ladies would have had their parlor. This would have been a ladies' parlor, and then the gentlemen would have had their, and you know, this kind of looks more feminine. And if you notice, like, in the library, even the details on the fireplace look very masculine. Yeah. You know, so. And this old piano, I think this is original. I was told this is original to the house. Have you heard any different, Joe? I have not. Yeah. And I might go try to play it. Uh, <laughs> Man, I'll be I'll be playing music nobody ever heard of. Okay, I mean, yeah. it would just be something. Um, and I'd like to point out right here too the pocket doors. That's still the that's the original. Uh, Where's that at, Joe? What pops out? You push this button. Here, there you go. And I think this one has a button too. You push that. Yeah, and it has little right handles there. come out so you can pull the door shut. Is it true this is original wood that survived? No. No. So the original wood was cherry wood? Yes, yeah, so this is cherry. The, oh, this is still cherry yeah. wood that... On here. That, that uh, this was wood that came from the property. Yeah. And yes. what used to be was original that is not here now, the one that burned down, all of this in here in was here. cherry wood. It was mostly all cherry wood in here. Okay. And it was all that cherry wood was harvested off of the English property. When the original house burnt down, there wasn't quite enough trees to do all of that again. And then so they, you know, they yeah. kind of switched out. We have the oak, but that's one good thing that I like about this in here. See, in here in this parlor, we have the cherry wood here. So on this side of the door, it's cherry wood, so it matches. But you can actually see right here on the edge where well, it's it pieced it. it, and so on this side where it's oak, the door's oak on this side, so everything matches and looks. You know, pull together. Yeah, I had heard something about the cherry, and and yeah, that was just something I had heard in passing over yeah. the years. I think, in a way, I mean, it was probably beautiful with the cherry wood, but I think it probably might look better with the oak because I imagine the cherry was probably like really dark in mm -hmm. here, you know. But well, and you could see that on that door, and you know. So this is space six. This is a I don't know a foyer. The foyer. Uh, we call the bottom of the stairs the foyer. Um, this was moved in recently. This did not belong <laughs> We're bringing to the house. In. Yes. Um, if we have a light, it will show you some interesting features here in this foyer. Of course, this is the main front door. Where did and, we... and if you oh. notice, it's a Dutch door, so the top will actually open independently of the bottom. And this area here, this kind of area like this, where the fireplace is designed, is, is literally called an angle's nook. <laughs> but the, this fireplace, it was designed to win. They have a fire in it. It was supposed to drop, draft it out underneath this landing here. And then, of course, you have the turret here. And the chimney runs, it's, part of, it's incorporated into that turret. Um, I was told that it never quite heated properly because that was just a lot to expect from it. But I do want to point out something really lovely about this fireplace. If you notice in here, it's a replica on the inside there of uh, Shakespeare Theater. Which is just a, you know, a fancy little touch, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> and then, cool. if you notice all these Shakespeare books right here. Right, that's right. Which I'm not sure, I don't know what the story is on that bookcase. It fits really well, but I don't know, I was based off of its craftsmanship, if that was the if that was originally sitting there. Yeah, because at first I thought maybe it was a built-in, but then yeah. I noticed it wasn't, and yeah. it doesn't quite. But it does fit well. It does. But that'd be a lovely place to sit down the fire mm -hmm. and read a book. And uh, we could point out here too that Captain Billy incorporated stained glass windows in the castle. Mm -hmm. uh, he was also a member of the Presbyterian Church in Radford, and we believe also sourced or was part of the um, bringing in the stained glass windows that are part of that church as well. And that church is still standing there yes. on Fourth Street. Yes. Yeah, the, the stained glass in that church is very, very similar. I mean, it, yeah. it's almost, it's not exactly the same, but it's, it's very close. It's very close. Beautiful. And to me, this, I think the detail up here in the ceiling and everything, it's just, it's, it's, I love it. And this always makes me think of a grand piano for some reason. Um, the, the story, yes. the, the reason why he did that, do you want to talk about that? I don't know how true it is. It's kind of neat and kind of goes along with the but, channel. But theme, I think so. that during Victorian times, you know, they were, paranormal was kind of big during Victorian yes. times. People, you know, had a lot going on with There's that. There's a big spiritual Yeah, it was a big spiritual movement. And 
they had the belief that spirits could get trapped in corners in the house. And so I heard, I, I, I don't know if it's true or not, yeah. probably not, but, but that's why he has so many curves. But I think in general, he liked curves because a lot of his designs incorporate various curves of, of different sorts. The prime example I can think of Come is the train me. trestle down there here on the river. It's got a curve in it. He designed that. So. He did. Yeah. But that that's that's what we were... <laughs> yeah. I just thought that was neat and it kind it of went with the theme story. a little bit. I mean, bit. if it's true, but I mean... I, was, I think that's part of the challenge, too, though, that we have with Captain Billy's legacy is that he didn't leave a lot of yeah. record behind about what his thought processes yeah. were. Um, and so we, we do have we to speculate. Found yet anyway. also. Yeah, we haven't found yet. We might right? find something. We might. That's right. We're still speculating. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's move on let's to our next stage. Upstairs. upstairs. <laughs> All right. So this is space seven. This is the top of the stairs. And the angles use this. Uh, quite often as a living room area that, that we know of as a living room area particularly in the winter time because it was warmer up here with the heat rising and she did a lot of crocheting and stuff so you would find her here and she might maybe would entertain up here but be a good spot for a living room um behind you donnie is one of the two what is called a sleeping porch in the south in the summertime it was hot before air conditioning and sometimes it was too hot to sleep indoors so they have a screened area. That particular one there, they mostly use for laundry to hang and dry. Uh, There's a second one off of the master bedroom, which we'll, which see, we'll see in a minute. In a minute. Yeah. Space eight. This, is, this happens to be my personal favorite bedroom in the house. Um, Cause I love the river view. Um, we're not sure who all stayed in this room, but they had a lot of guests. So I would imagine guests may have stayed here. Um, one of the features of this room, if you'll notice, what do you notice about the corners of these, of that wall over there? Rounded. Yeah, there's no corner. <laughs> it's rounded. So, yeah, just another example. Oh, yeah, your curve to, is on. Yeah, tell your kid to go sit in the corner and be like, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> That's what my toddler would tell me. I can't. They're, they're very logical with yeah. toddlers. I mean, but, but yes. But, um, if you ever make your way down to, speaking of guests to the house or borders, if you ever make your way down to 13 Angles, you will pass a Fouquet Street. And so there was actually, I read in the application for the historical property piece that there was a Dr. Fouquet and his wife that were actually boarders to the house. So maybe this was their room. It could be. It could be. At one point. Yeah. Oh, this house is on the National um... Registry of Historic. Yeah, we, yeah, we didn't talk about that. Yeah. yeah. You'll have to get a picture of that. I mean, I, I yeah. think we did last time. Yeah, I think we did. Right. He's coming, he's coming. Yeah. <laughs> he's running his back. This is space eight, yes. That's Today, the I've lost count. <laughs> this space here, this was the master bedroom. This was so this was Captain Billy and his and Minnie's bedroom here. They have their own private personal sleeping porch. So this door here. Imagine sleeping out here in the summertime when you've got the river and it's just the crickets. I yeah. think what I was reading about sleeping porches during the Victorian era, one, it's the temperature, you get that breeze at night, but then it's also the white noise yes. that nature would bring with it. Yes, yes. I know that like down in Rona, for instance, there are a lot of older homes, they've like closed them in now, yeah. but they were all sleeping porches back in the day. Like the, the top, the yeah. second story was like a sleeping porch. Yeah. make me a sleeping porch. I know. <laughs> but yeah, you know, in they have like, this lovely bay windows here. Um, behind Donnie there, that's the door that goes into the, the master bed and closet, but then on the other side is a door that takes you straight to a bathroom. Um, so that was very convenient, especially in the 1890s. I couldn't imagine. I mean, that was like, 
know, people just didn't they, they have a collection tank in the attic, right? They would collect rainwater. Yes, yeah, so at the, the turret on the, the outside, which, make, which gives this place the castle name, it was designed, it had a cistern system on the top to collect rainwater, and they were able to use it for water in the house, running water inside the house. Did you see the cistern? Have you seen it? I have not seen I'll it. I'll show you. I almost crawled into it. I may have seen <laughs> yeah. it, just didn't know that's we'll what that. it was. Let me put it that way. I think this here is one of the odder, you know, design elements, like, like Joe was talking about earlier, just like, what was he thinking? It's just so odd to me to have that. The arch? The arch is there, because it's taller than, you yeah. know. I mean, it works, but I just think that was just such yeah. a strange, you know, what a, what a place to fit it. Here's another example of the cherry wood. Um, this brings us down to this hallway here, and we have, of course, it's been remodeled, so it's more modern now. The but, toilet. But the bathroom, and they, it was actually, you know, they had the bath, and they had like a flush toilet. And, you know, 1892, that was just, most people had an outhouse. <laughs> Or a bedpan. Yeah, this was one of the first <laughs> houses with indoor plumbing. Yes, yeah. yes. And so I mean, they had like the flush and everything. And so so this is that's what you have there. And then we follow this hall around. Man, they're fancy. <laughs> no, he did so much. He, he did. I mean, he, and yes. I still every now and then will run across a, a new detail that I hadn't noticed before. I'm like, how, how neat is that? Yeah. Now, if we come back here into this, this bedroom, First thing you might notice is again we have curved corners yep. <laughs> on the walls. Now, from what I've read and understood, this back room was for like when long-term guests would come and stay. You know, that they had like family members that would come and stay for months and months at a time, and they would tend to stay more back here because it's quiet. You know, um, so yeah, they had their own little private space up here, away from the rest of them. Mm -hmm. I was just noticing, like for the first time, it looks like there's layers of paper. It's it like probably the is. Peeling back it does. There's another pattern in behind yep. here. Right there, you yes. can see it. But you know, y'all can see where they've done work, you know, from, it's, it's water damage, which kind of gets us to, you know, our fundraiser and everything, why it's so, so critically important for us to raise the money to fix the roof. To fix the roof. Yeah. Raise the roof. Raise the roof. Raise roof. Right. Exactly. Recrown it. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's go to the attic. I let's guess. go to the attic. Yeah. Did someone say the attic? <laughs> now, this may slam shit because good morning. Yeah. Don't freak out. Um, so this is the attic. Up here is where the servants and their family stayed at. This was their quarters up here. Um, you have like various like little rooms here. Um, one really neat thing I want to show you. Of course, when this house was built, they didn't have let, you know, air conditioning and stuff like that. So it's like, how can you try to cool a big house like this? Well, if you look up in through this hole here, you'll notice you can see daylight through. So all along up through there, they have a, it's like a ventilation system. And then the summertime, you can come out here, Donna, you can see it over here. In the summertime, they can leave the, uh, the door, the door, the door okay. and the windows and everything open the attic door and all that it was draw all the hot air because hot air rises anyway yeah. and draw it up and out of the house and kind of keep a you know some air circulating so that's you know that's I kind of talking cool. about that and i didn't know what you was talking about that's yeah. it was the first time that i've seen it uh, the owner showed yeah. me that one day <laughs> i was like well how neat but now this is one of my favorite spots of all if i can't have that one bedroom downstairs no, the view here is just... Yeah. This, this is my favorite spot in the house because the view is just... I just want to bring me a chair up here and a nice bit. Mm -hmm. and sit and sit I'm up. sure they did, don't you? Man. That is awesome. Now, we had a guy in the comments on the last one say that uh, he saw like a, a lady a couple years ago uh, he'd be fishing on the river, and he saw like a like a lady just standing there staring. I mean, it could have been Julie. Maybe that was just Julie. <laughs> 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 well, this was before we filmed the other yeah, one. I know. I mean, it could have been a lot of people in the Radford area swear they have seen a woman in looking out the windows here. Yeah. Yeah. And there was something that oh, they said they used to come out and play on the property when they were kids and. Yeah. Chase foxes and stuff and they would disappear. I don't know about any of that. Either. Yeah, I wrote it all up. Yeah. yeah. But uh 
we'll the talk about it. The people coming out of the woodworks growing up now, they were staying home yeah. in the theater. There were, there were yeah. a ton of comments. Yeah. Yeah. So this is under the, this is how you get up to the tour. Yes. And we can't get up there. No. Uh, unfortunately, he swears it's talking. the best view in the, in the, in the, in the town. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, well, we're just under the best view in town, man. We're just <laughs> under the best view in town. Where does that put you up at, though? The top of the. Tour. You're on the tour. Oh, that yeah. that is yeah, see, cool. We're in the tour yeah. Donald right now. got some drone footage of the top of it. So okay, yeah, so like right now we're over top of the the grand staircase and uh, oh, yeah. and up over top of here is where the cistern system. No, I'm going to show would you. Collect well, the it'll correct. I'll show you where the cistern. But then they would at. draw. It would, uh, they would. It comes over there behind that door. Let's go see. I'll show that. you. Yeah. Pretty elaborate if you think about it. I mean, did you bring your light up here? <coughs> I don't have my big club light. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's dark. Yeah, I remember the first time we were here. We we yeah. couldn't. So, so the, it's back behind here. Yeah, we didn't look in there. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I was curious about these boxes. I was like, what are those things? Is there anything in those boxes? But there's nothing in the boxes. Oh, okay. But you can see this kind of like, this is where the water's draining into this big tub here. And then, this might have been, this is, I guess this is Detroit Heating and Light Company. Yeah, that's for the so heat this would have been for the gas for this, and yes. for the heat. Wow. Yeah. You actually did a Google search. I took a picture of that Google okay. Well, first, I see. So this is space number 12. Uh, we're gonna take a look at um, the house from, I guess, a different perspective, the perspective of the servants that worked for the Ingalls family. Slavery would have been abolished by now during the Reconstruction era, the 13th Amendment abolished slavery after the Civil War. And so, uh, but servant servants were a way of life and the house was designed so that the servants were, had a separate existence, if you will, um, than the family. Oh, absolutely. So, they would have came up, they would have used these these stairs to go from floor to floor as not the main staircase. And, you know, we just came down from, you know, where they would have stayed at and slept at and lived at when they weren't working. And They had some of the best views in the house. They yeah. really yeah. did. They yeah. just like they're going to look at my view. Yeah. yeah. But right, do so. y'all want to head down? Or sure. Do y'all want to let Donna go first? Yeah. So he doesn't get me on camera falling. So that's your angle. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get me. It'll be holding the gun up here me. There'd be a separate go go find me for that. Himself. Almost did it again. All right, and so, like I said, that was the servant staircase we just came down. This and this hallway here were all part of the servant's hallway. <laughs> so, and this is the door here. We talked about the butler's pantry. This is the way that the servants would have accessed it, is through this door here. That's where I went in That's earlier. That's Jimmy yeah. played peekaboo out of it. Yeah. So, I knew you were going to open it up, so I slid in there. So we go in this way? I think we're going to have to because it says push, but... Well, not today. Do. And so, of course, you have this hallway. This this was a a storage pantry for the kitchen, but it has been converted into a bathroom now. So, but it was a pantry at one time. Uh, one little neat thing about this, access it and show you. Um, you can tell one day again where this was a pantry. If you can see right here, well, through the years of Melston. Got, them, got, them, <laughs> got themselves away in there. It's like, there you go. That's what I'd go with. All the food is. All right. So if you'll come on in here to the kitchen. Oh, yeah. Here's the kitchen. Oh, that is really cool. Yeah. So this would have been the call box. I don't know if this was a part of this house or the Harvey house. No, I think that might have come from the Harvey um, house. But a similar design with the servant buttons that we've been showing you around the house, there would have been a box that would have let this, um, the staff know where the call came from. And I think I've got it upside down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that would go off and then it would actually show an arrow where the button was pushed where uh, the service call needed to be made. Oh, it looks like you can reset it there by pulling that down. 
Yeah. It's so neat. Yeah. It is pretty neat. And I'd like to like point out a little feature. One thing I want to say about the kitchen. Oh, yeah. It was, I need to um, get it out of the way. At some point in the 70s, someone remodeled it. Um, so it has been updated. So it's been. Yeah, updated. that is not in a. a yeah, it is not. Now, originally, the cook stove would have said, you can still see the platform there. Oh, yeah, That's right there. The cook stove would have said originally. You can still see where they, they ran out the flue there. But one little interesting thing I found out, because you know the Ingalls were part of the Ingalls Tavern and the Ingalls Ferry, this cabinet here was originally in the Ingalls Tavern. So, and it's the oldest piece of furniture the in the house. Piece in here. So this dates the Ingalls Tavern was 1700. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, it's the 1700s. Late 1700s, yeah. yeah. But that, that still survives after there. all these years, but yeah. And you can still see here we, they have both the, the gas light, the mm -hmm. original gas light fixture, along with the electric. So. Of course, not really going with the expensive light fixtures here, not too fancy. Not too fancy. <laughs> it was in the, the kitchen. kitchen. It was just, yeah, I mean, just you know, to serve, serve its purpose. Just whatever was functional yeah. at the time. So, yeah. But, you know, again, you've got the windows with the, with the shutters and... I think that's one of my favorite pictures yeah, yeah. in here. I was like, I can really do something like that. All right, I think we're ready for Space 13. The oh, basement. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I had a horrible experience in that basement. That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah. He, and it wasn't you, nothing paranormal either. Yeah. <laughs> and right. it felt like I was about to become yeah. paranormal. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Who wants to go first? Like, well, you're, I guess uh, you are. <laughs> don't. Don't uh, sink into the swamp again. I'm not going yeah. to the swamp. <laughs> Ooh, it is cold down it's there today. Down here. Yeah, good gosh, it wasn't. Woo. All right, so we are in the final location here in the basement. The basement is original to the house that was here first and then burned down. Yes. Somewhere in here, one of the other volunteers has told us who has spent a lot of time in this house that you can see the scorch marks from the original fire. I'm not sure where they are. Yeah, I haven't found them yet. I guess we'll have to save it for another time. Yep. But see, now y'all have reason to come day. back. One day we're going to find I've a scorch. I see some black on the rock over here. That could be it. Well, no, the scorch would have probably been more up near the. I don't know. I, I should have questioned him more. I know. Yeah. I should have. But you can see that you know the house has all it's all kinds of like little different rooms and like um, there's a like wash sinks and stuff over on that side over here which I'm not going back over there again because I about got stuck permanently <laughs> yesterday yeah. left my yeah the, your footprints <laughs> gonna be there forever I'm <laughs> jealous about that I part <laughs> I was like oh no I ran into that quicksand they always warned us about when we were kids but um you know they had like canning so there's like whole shelf and stuff in there where they put their canned goods at you know. Which you can imagine this is a nice refrigerated area to put your stuff in. And as you kind of walk around and look through, you can it's almost like a history of heating and because there's like you got like old boiler on the other side, and then you have like you know all this you know more modern stuff, and it just kind of Jason took off over there. I don't know where he is. You got a light, Jimmy. We can see that over here. I should have brought a flashlight. Go? He went in there. Oh. <laughs> Don't mind me unless I don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> if you start screaming, you're on your own, dude. I'm not gonna. <laughs> oh, what? That's the uh, the the. Yeah. Yeah, you can see all the old original boilers and stuff. Oh dang. Yeah, that's that's how they would heat. You know, that's one of the ways that one time they heat the house would be they would heat up the water, and it would go into the um, radiators throughout the house and heat. That is so neat. You know, Cindy would like some to see this thing. Yeah. But see, you just got it's like a like a time capsule of, and then you can get yeah. a more modern one here. Yeah, <laughs> it's doing its thing. And then I wonder what was here because there's obviously there was something going on here. Oh, somebody might have been trying to hide something there. <laughs> Is that where you had the abducted up victims you picked up to <laughs> put uh, down here in the basement? That. That's, that's what you see on yeah. TV. Thank you much, Oh yeah, yeah, that. But yeah, there's just all kinds of little there's all kinds of this stuff down here. But I haven't really come in and really did a lot of digging yet. You just never know. There's little 
What is it though? This one over here, did you get the old one? No. Too dark. <laughs> I mean, I shined it for Donald and he got footage of it. Is this a moonshine jar? Yeah. 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 It kind of looks like it. Yeah, you know, they were, they were ours. You know, they had some kind of. Oh, that's a big deal. Unless they were of the stunk variety that didn't want even drink it. So that wraps up our uh, 13 rooms in Ingalls Castle. Thank you both for everything. Thank um, you all for coming. Oh, this, yeah, was, this was really neat. A lot of great history. I, I had a blast. I mean, I was picturing in my head the, the people living here and the things going on the whole time y'all were talking to you. Both did an amazing job. Um, so I guess I'll go over a little bit of the things that I've heard. We did another video a year ago where we didn't know as much, but we got a lot of comments mm -hmm. about spooky stuff going on here. And, you know, it is spooky. It is spooky so I'll go, I'll go over some of it. One fan said that uh, if y'all remember the, the up there in the attic, that window that faced um, the new river, he said that he fished that river for years. I think it was in a boat or something. And he always saw like a, uh, like a creepy looking figure that looked like an old lady staring out the window up there at him. And uh, once he saw our video, it kind of connected the dots, and he wondered if maybe it was the spirit of somebody watching the river out there. You know, maybe. Yep. Who maybe. knows? <laughs> and then another fan said the same thing. We, we, got, we got a lot of comments saying people said they saw what looked like a lady watching out the windows. And there were quite a few people. Yeah. You know, in the was, area or who grew up here or even went to college here that all seem to have this story. They all swear they've been floating down this river and, and have seen a lady looking out the windows. So yeah. I know I kind of look up when I come in. Mean, yeah, I do too. What's in that water? Yeah. yeah. What's, in that water? <laughs> What's in the water? <laughs> so. They spent th too much time in the sun. Yeah. <laughs> Or they've been drinking too much while they yeah. looked down, yeah. Um, the, the same person said that uh, he, he had a friend that lived nearby here, and there, they would be chasing uh, foxes, cats, and dogs in the fields out here, and they would cut a, the, the animals would cut a corner or something, and they'd just be gone. So, ugh, that's creepy. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, there is a legend about the place I've seen online that uh, if you take a picture of yourself here, you might catch the lady in the mirror in a picture. And we were out taking pictures here a year ago, and we caught somebody that wasn't with us. I mean... Yes, yes. When, when the three of us were here last June. Yeah. And it was... Just the three of us here, because the gentleman that let us in, he was he left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we were out inside here on the front lawn, out in the yard. And we took pictures, and I think you did your, like, intro and all that stuff. And then later, it, I don't know what it is. It looks intriguing, but there does definitely look like there's a figure on the porch. Yeah. And there shouldn't be anybody there. I don't know. Now, it could have been some of the, the ho like, a homeless person that was here illegally. Yeah. That's possible, and... That is definitely creepy. Yeah. That is very like creepy. That's there, a different kind of creepy. Go, that is yeah. a whole yeah. different I mean, kind of creepy. Yeah. There, um, theoretically, there should not have been anybody on the porch at all. There was. There should have just been the three of us here, and we were all out in, in the Yeah. Room. It looked like a lady dressed in all black, kind of almost like a nun almost. Yeah. That was pretty dang creepy. Jared found that. Yeah. And... Uh, mm -hmm. 
Oh, while we were filming, we were in there, oh, yeah. and we heard, we thought we heard footsteps going across the, um... Yeah, and I think on the video, I don't think you can hear them, but you can see all three of us reacting. Yeah, we kind of looked at each other. Yeah, we were standing, like, right in this doorway, and he was filming, and it sounds like somebody was walking, which we hadn't even been upstairs yet, so it was like, what's upstairs above that? And, of course, it's the upstairs little yeah. area. Now, I will say... I don't know what it was, but yeah. it sounded like somebody yeah. walking, but it's an old house. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. That's what I Now, you say. did say <laughs> that you heard something like that, too. I did. And you went up there finally. I did. And I was, heard a bunch of... I was in here alone, and I was cleaning in the... I was working in the dining room, and I was working away, and I started hearing a bunch of banging and carrying on, and I got up, and I'm walking around, and... Didn't see anything, got quiet, and so like three times I was up and down, and then finally I found there was a bird. A bird had gotten into the house and had gotten stuck in between the panes of one of the manufacturers in the captain's, the master bedroom. was stuck up in there, and of course it's like big, big, yeah. bang, bang, but I'm going to tell you, I, I, mean, I was like, I was here by myself, and I, was oh, like, I don't man. know. <laughs> I was like, I'm hearing things in there. And I was messing. I had my daughters were coming up, and I was like, I'm hearing things in the house. Like, oh, I don't wish you were yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a bird, you know. But just one thing is true about the castle. It definitely captures the imagination. Mm -hmm. um, and we hope that we've done a good job with the castle and the family's history. And there may be times that we've taken some missteps. Nothing that we've done intentionally. Yeah. And I will be quick to try to catch those and correct them in the comments section if we did. Mm. Oh, do you guys want to talk about a big part of the reason we're here? Yes. Is to raise the roof. Yes. So the castle is in much need of some repairs, and a GoFundMe has been started. I believe I was the first donor on it. Yeah. yeah. 50, what awesome. Was it, 50 yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I left the first donation. I, I was watching that when it first came out. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely doing it. And um, the GoFundMe link will be pinned in the. Uh, I think we're going to try and do this as a um, as a uh, gosh, what are they called? I can't think what they're called now. A premiere. There, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yes, a YouTube premiere in the chat. There's going to be a pinned link to the GoFundMe. I will also link the GoFundMe in the description of the video. For all y'all watching later who didn't catch the premiere, and till the till the 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 goal is re reached, people could go and donate to restoring the roof. It's it definitely needs some repairs. Uh, they're wanting to do regular tours here too, and it's going to need some repairs for that. But our most important first thing we need to do is is get a the roof replaced. It, this house has the original roof that was put on it in 1892. It has served the house well. I promise my roof won't last as long. No. Yeah. But um, but she's she's lived out her lifespan and um. It's really a before huge we can do any, it, it, it's, it's a, a very cost, huge undertaking. And it's not enough that. Uh, the current caretaker and undertake undertaker. Duh. <laughs> oh, wrong video. Uh, caretaker and owner yeah. can do on his own. And yeah. like I said, he's been, I think, really true to the spirit of the Ingalls Castle. Very hospitable to allow us to come yes. and volunteer and pull things together. I'll tell you, he's honestly one of the nicest people yeah. I have ever and met. Thank, thank you to me. him for letting us come here. Yes, thank you. Uh, a spooky Appalachia too. Um, also, I will say that roof is beyond the repairs of what I could do with Flex Seal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I fixed mine a couple weeks ago with Flex Seal. Yeah, this one's no. way beyond that. And, and you probably noticed as we were walking through, you can see like water stained areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was problems. And, and, you know, one day down the road, we'd like to correct that. But we really can't do anything at all until we get the roof taken care of. Yep. So, so anything, I think a dollar from each of you. Yeah, even if it's a dollar, dollar anything would, would put the roof back on. And we hope for one day, really soon would be really nice if it was real soon. And yeah. Then we can have Spooky Appalachia back out and they can film a crew of, because that's going to be a happy day yeah. for me. But I can pull in down the there and there's a crew up there, there yeah. working on that room. I'll and maybe we can get that lady in the attic to come out. <laughs> <laughs> to, to help out too. Hey, she stayed here rent free. I mean, yeah. Been up there. Yeah. That day. Yep. Right. But yeah. 
What, did y'all have any questions or? No, I that? think that does it. Thank y'all both for meeting us out here and Absolutely. filming this with us. And it's been a fun little trip through the building. It's yeah, different so Very much more. There's there's furniture here. There's, <laughs> yeah. there's all kinds of stuff here now. I mean, it was a big empty place last time we were here. We have Huge things to difference. talk about now. We yeah. Yeah. Compared to the last video, yeah. I learned 10 times more. Yeah, and then we, we was just kind time. of exploring the house last time we, we kind of i kind of felt like a kid that broke in and was just like yeah that's exactly you know, yeah. and just like exploring yeah. the house and really didn't know a whole lot about it and um well and we'll go ahead and put a shameless plug in you know it's <laughs> april 13th the last weekend of july is mary draper ingles weekend and we are actually going to be part of that weekend this year so we plan on having tours of the castle along with other things that we haven't cooked up yet we haven't thought of so um, definitely put that on your calendar and plan on coming out then. That's a Mary Draper cool. Angles Festival. It's the last yeah. weekend in July, right? Yeah. And, and so seeing it in person is so much more, I think. It is. Even though yeah. you guys are awesome with the video. Yeah. Seeing it in person is going to be so much more mm. worth your time. Well, thank you all for tuning in. And we'll catch you in the next one. Is that what you did in the basement? No. <laughs> no. Wait, like, one more thing. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yes, yes. So if you find this, it's a the, magnet somewhere. Yes, in the building. somewhere in the house in this video, comment with the time stamp and we will respond. Yeah, we'll respond and send you out a free spooky Appalachia sticker. Sounds good. Catch you in the next one. <laughs>